The model view view model pattern is a popular design choice for many reasons. It helps keep your code organized by separating UI logic from business logic, making it more maintainable and easier to test. Like most things in coding, it's a bit controversial as some developers argue it's unnecessary in Swift UI. In my experience, MVVM shines in complex projects, helping clean up loaded files and making code more structured and readable. Even though Blossom Movie is small, applying MVVM will give us experience so you can decide if it's the right pattern for your own projects. To recap, our model is represented by the title file. This file defines the API object and is used for decoding our API response. There's also sample data to help us with our Swift UI views. While we're here, it doesn't hurt to fix a typo. Moving on, we have the data fetcher file. This file acts as a service that holds our network logic. It contains the fetch titles function, which connects to our API, retrieves the data, and decodes it into a title array. Next, we have our view model. It includes an enum to track the fetch status, initializes a data fetcher, and stores an array of training movies. Inside the get titles function, it calls fetch titles to populate the training movies array. Thanks to the at observable attribute, the view model automatically updates the UI whenever the data changes. To complete the MVVM pattern in this project, we need to connect the view model to our UI. First, open the horizontal list view file. Right now, it contains a static array of poster strings. Remove everything to the right of var titles. Replace it with colon bracket title. This allows us to define a title array when calling this view, making it dynamic. We get a few errors, the first one being because we use dot self as the ID in our for each loop. Our title struct already conforms to the identifiable protocol, so we can remove id.self. To fix the next error, use the title poster path property for the async image URL. Remember, all the title properties are optionals in case they're known the API. Therefore, use a double question mark operator provide an empty string if the value is missing. A default URL will be a better approach, but an empty string works for now. We have one more error in this file. The preview requires an array of titles to compile. Scroll down, click on the error, and select fix. This adds the titles parameter, which we can set to title dot preview titles to resolve the issue our sample data coming in clutch. We're ready to go with this file. There are a few more errors to address, but before we fix them, open apiconfig.json. Replace your key with your actual API key from the movie database. I'll be doing this off camera, but please make sure to do this as the code won't work without it. If you need help getting your key, check out my API keys video for guidance. With that done, navigate to home view. Under hero test title, add let view model equals view model. This creates a new view model that will control the UI. Press enter after the scroll view brace. Type switch. Pause for a second to see if Xcode auto completes it. If it does, Press tab to start the switch statement, pause, then press tab again to autocomplete the rest. It's always nice when Xcode helps us out. However, my switch statement isn't quite right. I need to change the third case to dot success. For now, I'll leave an empty text in there. Next, I need to add the last case, dot failed, let error. Inside this case, 
I'll simply add text, error, backslash error. To break it down, we executed a switch statement on the viewmodel.homeStatus enum. When case is dot not started, we show an empty view. With dot fetching, a progress view appears. In dot success, we currently have a text placeholder, but we'll add our UI here soon. Finally, in dot failed, we display the error as a text on screen. Let's scroll down to fix the error that's showing. Click on the error and select fix. This adds the missing titles array. Inside that, type viewmodel.trendingmovies. Select the other three horizontal list views and comment them out using command forward slash. We pass the view model training movies to our horizontal list view, which will display them. Although right now, the training movies are empty. Now scroll up and double click on the lazy V stack brace. Reselect everything from the ending brace back to lazy V stack. Press command X to cut. Inside the dot success case, select the text and paste with command V. If the case is dot success, the UI will not be displayed. The last step is to make sure the view model populates the training movies array. Double click on scroll views open brace. On the closing brace, add dot task braces. Inside dot task type await view model dot get titles. The dot task modifier runs an asynchronous task when the view appears, allowing await view model dot get titles to fetch data without blocking the UI. This is the moment of truth. If your preview builds and you can scroll down to see the training movies list, you're good. Scroll to the right and take a moment to appreciate how fast and smooth it scrolls. This whole section has been leading up to this moment. If you're not so lucky, we'll troubleshoot now. Press Command R to run the app. I got the simulator up and the list is working great. Open your log and the first thing to check is the API address. Copy and paste it to an empty browser window. You should see data returned just like mine. If you don't see data, check your API address to make sure it wasn't mistyped. Also verify that your API key is valid. You might also have configuration issues. Compare your code to the completed version to find any mistakes. Misspellings in the title struct or API config.json are also common issues. This wraps up the video. Great job making it this far. We've learned a lot in the course so far and even implemented a clean MVVM design. I'll end it here, but I can't wait to see you in the next one.